Hello and welcome to a Sunny Book Nook. My name is Sunny and today I'm going to be bringing to you my 2022 reading stats. So in my favorite books, favorite fiction books of 2022 video, I asked whether you guys would want to see a stats breakdown video, like a wrap up of the whole year of reading of, you know, my last year. And a lot of people said yes. So I was like, you know, I guess I'll do that. Before I get into that, just in case people ask, because um, sometimes people will ask about what makeup I'm wearing and stuff. Also, I realize I'm not wearing earrings. I need to go put on earrings. Give me a second. I put on my Yakult earrings that my friend made, and uh, I'm wearing the Tower 28 Beach Please Rush Hour blush. It's a cream blush. I really like it. And the Smashbox lip gloss. It's the Be Legendary Longwear Lip Wear. I don't even know whether they still carry this, but essentially, yeah. That is what I am wearing. So just wanted to get that out of the way. Okay, and now let's go into the stats breakdown over categories that I think are interesting and hopefully you find interesting. So I read 235 books in total and the majority of them were adult, like the audience, the intended audience of the books were for adults uh, because 212 of those 235 books that I read were for an adult audience, 19 were for a young adult audience, and 4 were for a children's audience. So the breakdown is 90% adult, 8% YA, 2% children's. So that's the majority of my reading is adult and that makes sense. I'm an adult and you know, I read less and less YA, I think, at each year, mostly because it's a hit or miss genre for me most of the time. Like, it has to be a really good book for me to really enjoy it. And I think the only standout YA novels from the past, from that I read in 2022, are The Ones We're Meant to Find by Joan Ho, which is a science fiction fantasy future dystopian speculative fiction story with sisterhood at the center of it and last night at the telegraph club by melinda Lowe, which is a historical sort of romance following these 1950s lesbians this chinese femme and in san francisco as she gets to come to terms with her identities i think these are the two YA books that were the most impactful for me over the past year that I read. Although I don't think I read this this past year, but I did discuss it this past year on my podcast. So yeah, I think this is definitely the standout young adult novel of the past year from what I can recollect. But because I'm reading more adult novels more and more, like I've been able to focus in on what I know I like, which is like a lot of different things, which will then lead me into my next category of stats that I went back and sorted through, which was genre. The genre breakdown that I have, I actually categorized all the books that I read last year into 28 different genres. And that's because I think like it was important to get down both format so like play or short story collection or you know just like contemporary novel as well as the other elements of like actual genre like science fiction or whatever that were important the largest genre that i read was literary fiction realism so just like straight up like no magic or weird shit happening, just literary fiction. And I read 33 books in this category. So that made up around 14% of my total reading in 2022. And then the biggest category below that was my nonfiction reading, but I categorized my nonfiction reading into two groups, which you will also see in my nonfiction recommendations or my nonfiction 2022 wrap up videos as well, because one of them is like a memoir sort of personal essay nonfiction. And then there's one that's like history slash like theory nonfiction. And so the second largest genre category of 2022 was my nonfiction history slash theory category coming in at 17 books, which is about 7.2% of the total books that I read. 
And then the next most amount of books that I read was comic editions. So I separated comic editions from volumes of comics from graphic novels because I think it's a distinction that is important for the statistical makeup of genre breakdown in terms of adding up all the numbers like 235 as a total reading number that includes each comic edition if I read them separately because oftentimes comics will be like edition one, edition two, edition three, edition four, edition five, and then after the all five editions have come out month after month, they'll be compiled into like volume one. Sometimes I will read like volume one, including all of those editions at once, and other times I will read each edition on its own as a different book. So that's why my third most read genre category that I tracked in these stats breakdown of genre was comic editions. I read 13 comic individual editions this past year, which makes up about 6% of my reading. Then the next category below that was literary short story collections. So these are short story collections that are entirely like literary fiction with only a hint of magical realism or no magical realism at all, with maybe some historical elements, you know, realism, that type of vibe just lit fic, right? And that category, I read 12 books out of the year, and that makes up about 5.1% of my reading. Oh shit, I forgot. It wasn't comic editions that came after nonfiction history and theory. It was actually mystery thrillers. I read 14 mystery thrillers um, and 17 nonfiction history slash theory. I'm looking at my computer here, obviously, so like it has all my stats on there. So I read 14 mystery thriller novels, which makes up 6% of my reading. And then the comic editions, I read 13 of them, which makes up 5.5% of my reading. And then with the literary short story collections, that's 12 of the books that I read, which makes up 5.1% of my reading. And then I also read 12 books in the horror category. So another 5.1% of my reading went to horror novels. Then it goes to nonfiction memoir slash personal essay type books. And that was 11 books. So that was 4.7% of my reading. Also, I'm going through this order of genre in like descending order of largeness of category. So these next few other genres are all making up 4.7% about of my reading because I read 11 total books of all of these genres. So I read 11 total books of magical realism that I categorized, 11 total books of contemporary romance that I categorized, 11 total books of magical realism, literary short story collections. So like literary short story collections that I wouldn't categorize in science fiction fantasy because I have a different genre category from that, but I also wouldn't categorize as like literary. So somewhere in the middle, you know, so I read 11 books that I would put in that uh, category genre. And then 11 fantasy novels, because I also separated fantasy from science fiction from sci-fi fantasy, because I think like there are some books that really meld the genre and then some people that, and some books that really like stick to just one. So the books that really stuck to just fantasy, I read 11 of those. So 4.7% again. Now moving on to books that made up 3.4% of my reading. So I read eight books that I categorized in the science fiction fantasy genre, and then also eight books that I categorize in the historical romance genre, so both 3.4% of my reading. Then I read seven books that I would categorize in the science fiction genre, which makes up 3% of my reading around, and seven poetry books or poetry collections, which makes up, again, another 3% of my reading. And then the next genre category I made was science fiction fantasy short story collections, and I read six of those, so that makes up around 2.5% of my total reading, the total number of books that I read. And I also read six commercial contemporary books because I think there are some books that are like kind of literary fiction, but not really. They're more commercial and contemporary. So that's that genre. So I read six of those books and that's also 2.5% of my reading. And I also read six historical fiction books, books that I would just entirely categorized as just like historical fiction novels that don't necessarily have any magical realism or mystery element or any other genre. Or maybe if it does, it leans more heavily into the historical element than anything else. So 
2.5% of my reading again. Oh, my tummy is rumbling if you hear that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> and then the next category is cozy mystery. I read five cozy mysteries this past year. And so that's around 2.1% of my reading. And then below that is literary romance. So like romance, like literary novels, literary fiction that centers on romance, but aren't romance novel-y enough to be categorized as romance novels, if that makes sense. So that made up 1.7% of my reading. And then I read four classics, again, 1.7% of my reading, and four comic volumes, so like volumes of collected editions. So again, 1.7% of my reading three short stories, so just individual short stories that were collected on their own or published on their own, such as like Resuscitif by Toni Morrison, which was published this past year. I listened to Via Libro FM, three of those, which is around 1.3% of my total reading. And then these next five categories are all point nine percent of my reading ish um, because I read two books in each of these categories. I read two plays, two graphic novels, two picture books, two historical mysteries, and two YA contemporaries. So that is the genre breakdown of my past year. It was really annoying and, and intensive to try to go through and the numbers probably do not add up because of course I tried to make the different genres as mutually exclusive as possible which is why there's so many different genres but yeah that's the statistical percentage and number of books breakdown for genre. I think that the fact that my most read category is literary realism uh, nonfiction, history and theory, mystery thriller, comic editions, and literary short story collections, and then horror makes sense for 2022 because I think mystery thrillers and comic editions are sort of easy and fast for me to go through and nonfiction history theory is something that like I'm always trying to get more of and literary short story collections are always something that I like feel like I'm in the mood for and want to get into but I also love a lot of the magical realism literary short story collections that I get to and read and yeah I mean I think like it's also interesting that in the top half of the different genre categories that I read, there was a fair amount of science fiction short story collections, which makes sense. Science fiction, historical romance, fantasy, magical realism. That is all stuff that I really enjoy, but of course every other genre is something that I will be pulling from and I think I will be continuing to read in the new year. I think in terms of like goals for 2023 and reading, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna vibe it out. I am always a mood reader. I can... Uh, my DNF's list on Goodreads is like hun it's like 150 books long and I will always table books as like I will finish this later because I always pick up new things and finish things whenever I want to finish them and stop reading them and then pick them up half a year later, a whole year later. Well, actually, this is kind of a major goal. I want to keep a reading journal so that way when I'm collecting the stats at the end of the year or at any given point, it's not such a pain in the ass. I need to figure out a system for that and like color code it and everything. And I don't want to do it like online. I want to do it analog because I did it on a spreadsheet in 2021 and then 2022 I did it in the aftermath sorting through all the books that I read and then putting it on a spreadsheet in the end instead of logging it throughout the year or trying to log it throughout the year on a pre-existing like book riot template spreadsheet and both of those were just like kind of annoying so I think like maybe going analog might be helpful and that way I can be better at you know categorizing books as the genre that I think they are in the moment, especially because sometimes I will reference, you know, like the Goodreads page on the of the book to see what what their main genre category is to the general audience because sometimes like I find it a little bit difficult to understand because I think like genre itself is sort of constructed in that you know there are some people who specifically write a lot of authors specifically write like genre fiction 
but there and there are some types of books that specifically fit into a form of genre such as like graphic novels or comics like that's a medium of itself but it's also a book of course and so it's just like all these things but anyways okay now let's get into the format in which I read these books. So I broke these down into three categories of audiobook, ebook, and print, like I physically read them, but I also broke them down into whether I listened to them on Hoopla, which is a free library app. My library allows me to check out 10 things on Hoopla. I can also read comics on Hoopla as well, I and ebooks. I can check out ebooks on Hoopla as well, but I don't really do that as often. I don't really like the Hoopla format of ebook so I didn't do that and then also Libby another free library online service which is the app version of overdrive which is the browser version also connected through my library and that one has sort of an unlimited amount of borrows it's like you can make 50 at a time you can make 50 borrows in your library uh, for me at least whereas for hoopla it's like capped at 10 in a month after you check out 10 books at that month no matter whether you return the book you can't check out more so it's like one of those things and then also Scribd which is a paid subscription app I think it's like $12 a month or something like that and it is a sort of online library but it has it had some audio playback issues this past year I think they're working on fixing it and also like halfway through the month or a couple weeks into a new month they'll pull out they'll pull back a lot of the titles that are available and be like not available until the end of the month until like June 25th or you know March 25th or whatever you know and so that is kind of annoying as well but I do access a lot of um, audiobooks there because sometimes audiobooks won't be available on Hoopla or Libby but will be available on Scribd or vice versa you know any of these categories so there's that and then also with ebooks sometimes I'll check out ebooks from Libby or through Scribd because Scribd has a good selection of ebooks usually and so yeah anyway but in total for audiobooks I read out of the 235 books that I read last year, 161 of them were audiobooks. Also, sometimes I would listen to the audiobooks, but also like have them physically. So there's some overlap here. It's not all mutually exclusive, but mostly so. I, the tracking of the stats, again, kind of annoying because I did it in the aftermath instead of in the process of reading annoying, you know, logging things. Anyways, so 65% of my total reading last year was done through audiobooks. So the majority of it, that's how I read most of my books and have been for the past like at least three years. I find it almost equivalent to physical reading in terms of being able to get a sense of how I feel about a book. My auditory and visual memory are Kind of similar when it comes to narratives and storytelling it's i don't know that's just how it is for me i know it's not the same for other people but yeah and then i read 16 percent of my books via ebook so that is 38 of my total books i read via ebook if i'm tracking that correctly and then 41 books that i read last year were ones that i read physically whether they be borrowed or ones that i previously owned and so yeah, like my, from my physical TBR, and that is around 17% of my reading. And yeah, so the breakdown looks like that. Um, in terms of like what app or how I read it, it was 35 books via Hoopla, so 14% Hoopla audiobooks, 77 books Libby audiobooks, so 31% Libby audiobooks. And then 49 books on Scribd for audiobooks, so 20% Scribd audiobooks. And then four Libby ebooks, so 2% Libby ebooks. And then five, per five books that I found like online or were PDFs or whatever that were sent to me. So that's again another around 2% of my reading. And then 29 ebooks via Scribd, so that's around 12% of my reading. And then for my physical TBR, 37 books, so 15% of my reading. And then for print books that I borrowed from other people, that was around four books. So that's around, again, 2% of my reading. So that's the breakdown of how I read the books, like the format of the books that I consumed this past year. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty typical. And that was, that was the breakdown. That's how I access most of my books. 
Libby and Scribd being the majority of where I get my audiobooks makes sense and sort of proves to me that Scribd is a pretty good investment. If 32% of my reading is coming from there last year via ebooks or audiobooks, it's like I think the subscription is you know, worth it, especially because there are some Scribd books that I can find there exclusively that my library doesn't have access to. So there's that. Um, and then let's get into author demographics. I think I read, if I was counting correctly, around 202 authors. So there were a lot of authors that I like doubled or tripled or quadrupled up on, especially with the comic books and comic editions. It was like, of course, the same author was writing all of those. So those all counted for the same person. And so that's around, you know, I read 235 books and so around 202 authors were within those those number of books. And so around 34% of those authors were people of color and then 66% were white. And so that meant that 134 of the authors that I read. And to get a more specific breakdown, I read from around 134 white authors, 27 black authors, 24 Asian authors, four Middle Eastern slash North African authors, six Latin American authors, two indigenous authors. Actually, I read um, Love After the End, which is an indigenous anthology. So a bunch of different authors there. And then around five, like mixed race authors. And in terms of the gender of the author, around 80% of the authors that I read were women. And so that was 162 books or 162 of the authors, uh, the large majority of my reading. And then 15% were written by men. So 30, 30 authors, 30 books-ish. And then 3.5% around were non-binary authors. So around seven books. And then 1.5%, so around like three books-ish, were like anthologies. So there wasn't like one singular gender for the authors in the anthology of like short stories or whatever. So anyway, that is the breakdown of the genre and audience of the books that I read, the way that I consumed it, audiobook, ebook, physical, and then the author demographics. So those are the stats that I thought were interesting to track and communicate to you. Let me know what your thoughts are and what your goals are for the reading year. I know that I definitely want to continue to read diversely and more diversely in terms of genre and author and everything. And I would say at least 50 to 60% of the books that I read were queer books in some way, like LGBT authors or stories or narratives. So that's always important to me and that's always something that I seek out at least in the books that I pick up like that's something that I'm like okay I will pick this up and I want to because it's about gay people and trans people so there's that um and yeah that is all that I have for you today thank you so much for watching and I hope that you subscribe and like this video if you haven't already and I will see you in my next one then hopefully all right bye